Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing Nobara Linux. Now, Nobara Linux is a built on top of Fedora. It's not affiliated to Fedora in any way, um, but you can think of Nobara if Linux Mint um, adds features onto Ubuntu that you don't ordinarily get, then Nobara does the same for Fedora. So it takes Fedora and it makes it more usable for the everyday Linux user. That's the aim of the project. So if we go to distrowatch.org, um, Nobara is currently sitting number 17th on the list uh, for the last six months. And um, if we look at the Nobara website, uh, you can see uh, Nobara project, is, to put it simply, is a modified version of Fedora Linux with user-friendly fixes added to it. And it says Fedora is a very good workstation. However, anything involving any kind of third party or propriety packages is usually absent from a fresh install. So basically what you're going to get is um, ease of use on top of uh, the uh, Fedora installation. So that, that that's what Nobara is going to give you. So yeah, uh, Nobara is number 17th on the distro watch list, but also uh, tracking, checking uh, Google Trends, uh, if we look worldwide for the search term Linux, you can see Nawawa is a rising trend over the last day. So as you can see, it's a rising trend in subject at this moment in time. Um, so I have an installation guide uh, that will be linked to this video. And uh, uh, this is a fresh install onto uh, one of my machines. And when you first boot up, you get this welcome screen. And under applications, you get um, traditional GNOME applications um, like maps, clocks, calendar, photos, etc. Uh, you also get um, LibreOffice and then you get some gaming things. So you've got Lutris, um, Steam, and you've got Wine Tricks for running um, wine apps. It also comes with VLC Media Player. Um, you've got this web apps thing which we'll come to later on and for people who've got NVIDIA drivers uh, NVIDIA cards there's this NVIDIA wizard here and then you've got this Proton Up QT thing which will help you with Steam as well so everything's geared up so if, if you plan to game on Linux then um, Nabara gives you a lot of the tools you need um, to start gaming so if we go back to this welcome screen um, the first steps are update your system, and when you launch that, it last for your password. It goes through all the repositories, and you say, I've got nothing to do. And then it says, Flatpak has been detected. Would you like to update all your Flatpaks on your system? I'm going to click yes. And you see, nothing to do for that as well. And no updates required, systems up to date. And then you can install pages in Codex. I did this yesterday as well. And you can also install proprietary NVIDIA drivers. You can install more apps from Software Center. We'll come to that later. And then you've got this thing called Web Apps. So if I launch that, uh, what you can do is, for instance, you can create an everyday Linux user app. And all you've got to do is Type in the name of the address, and then you uh, just click OK, and you can launch it from here. Or you can t search in the search bar, and Everyday Linux user now becomes an app. Now all it's really doing is open Firefox straight to the web page, and you'll see um, the Everyday Linux user YouTube page opens um, as as if it's an application, as opposed to although it is actually just Firefox um, behind the scenes. Uh, so basically, you can add loads of applications in there, and you can launch them from here as well, and you can edit them and, and remove them, etc. Under the recommended additions, you can install Blender if you're into 3D creation, uh, install Caden Live. Obviously, I am going to do that because um, I'll be editing the video later on. And you'll see uh, when you do that, it'll just go and 
download and install Caden Live. And you can see Caden Live has been installed. So I should be able to search here now for Caden Live. And you can see that's there. Hopefully it should load. And there we have it, Caden Live's working. You can install OBS Studio um, for live streaming and video recording. Uh, I tend to use Simple Screen Recorder for my purposes, but uh, OBS is um, obviously a, a, a standard within Linux. You can install Discord. Uh, optional steps, uh, you can if you've got AMD um, video card, you can install those drivers now. If you want to use Xbox One or Xbox Series controllers, you can install those here. Uh, DaVinci, uh, if you want to install fix-ups uh, to allow DaVinci Resolve to run, you can do that. And you can install Proton GE, which is uh, enables Steam to play uh, Windows games um, within Linux. So all these are, are very good add-ons. Uh, look and feel, uh, you can choose your login manager. So if I launch that, the default is GDM. The screen could do being a little bit bigger, um, but you've got SDM, Light DM as well so you can switch that out uh, you can get new themes and icons and that takes you to pling.com and you can see you've got the GTK GNOME themes that you can install there now uh, you can choose a layout so this is a traditional look so gives you the menu uh, a lot like uh, Windows does you've got the Windows 11 look which gives you this little bar at the bottom and then you click all ads like this, it does it alphabetically. Uh, you can do what's called the pineapple look. Uh, we have GNOME, which is the default look. Uh, GNOME 2, very old school. And we have Unity. For all you Ubuntu fiends out there. Uh, you can also theme your desktop. Uh, well, uh, so the general tweaks here, this is basically GNOME tweaks that you're running. Uh, suspend when laptop lid is closed, I'm using a desktop so I can turn that off. Uh, under appearance, these are the cursors and themes and the applications, the background, etc. So here's the background image, let's see if we can find something more. We'll go into the backgrounds later on. Uh, you can change the lock screen image. You can do stuff with fonts, keyboards, startup applications, and the top bar, title bars, windows, etc. And then you've got these extensions that you can add in. So I've added this applications menu. We can turn that off. So by default, your applications will be like this but you could add in the applications menu as well. And that gives you a more categorized look and feel. All these are basically extensions that you can install. Uh, worth trying some out and see what they do. And you can look for uh, user installed extensions. So after look and feel, there's uh, a bit about troubleshooting, documentation, how to update your system again, uh, community details like the Discord server, uh, and there's a subreddit on Reddit, uh, how to contribute to Nabara, and there's some credits as well. So now we have gone through all the welcome steps, let's have a look at some of the uh, hardware details. So uh, under printers, it's already found my uh, printer, so that's okay. Under Wi Fi, Under Wi-Fi, you can see it's found my um, uh, Wi-Fi driver, so that I can use Wi-Fi. Although I tend to use wired, but that works as well. And Bluetooth's turned on. So in theory, I should be able to go to Bluetooth. and it will find my speaker and that's connected perfectly fine as well so hardware all working perfectly well 
let's look at the app stores. So we've got two things here. We've got the Nabava package manager and we've got software, which is the GNOME software uh, manager. So here is the Nabava package manager. Uh, as you see, it lists things in alphabetical order, uh, but we can add filters or we can search for packages. So so I searched for Chromium and you can see Chromium has appeared there. If I search for Chrome however, that doesn't appear. Don't need to install Steam, Steam is already there, um, but maybe something like Spotify. And you can see the Spotify client list. Uh, to run that, I need to log out of um, Fedora and log back in. So you get a license agreement, click I read it and accept the terms, click OK. And this is basically going to um, give you the Spotify client. So it's going to install dependencies, download the sources, build it and then install it. Eventually this pop-up will appear. It does take quite a while to get to here. And then you just click OK. Type in your password. And after all that it says it can be built. Not to not to worry because we have flat packs. So if you go to the flat pack tab, you can click on add, install new pa uh, flat pack, and we can say, for instance, search for Chrome, and you can click confirm. I'm not sure what the one out of two is. That would suggest there's two packages available. And it appears to be installed in the dev version. Again, if we try and install uh, Spotify, you can see that's there and there's only one available. And as you can see that's now there. So um, and then you can see I'm in the Spotify client. So um my view on this tool is it's all right, but if you're using GNOME, uh, then you might want to just use the GNOME software manager. If you're using KDE, you might want to use KDE Discover. So now if I wanted Chrome, I can spell correctly. You can see it's much easier to find what you're looking for. Now obviously not everyone likes Chrome, but if you, it, this goes for any package. If you can't find it, in, I would use this tool over using the uh, Nabara tool. So uh, you can see that's installed, so I can open it from here open it from here I can pin it to my dash I can unpin the Firefox one and now I can make Chrome my default That's so So yeah, I'd recommend the uh, GNOME package manager over the um, Nabara one. The first thing you should do after installing a new browser is go to youtube.com forward slash at everyday user and you should hit that subscribe button because how else would you find videos like this? Now I want to look at some of the other applications that are installed. So. Uh, under the games, we've got Lutris, Steam, and Proton. So we're going to look at Lutris. Uh, let's try Lutris. And you can see Lutris has um, various different sources. So you've got the Epic Game Store um, for things like Fortnite. You've got uh, Good Old Games, Steam, Ubisoft, Origin, etc. And then these are the runners for it. So if I go to Good Old Games, 
Well, let me log in. I can click on Sensible World Saga and I can click on Install. And I can create a desktop shortcut, I can create an application menu shortcut. And you can see it's completed. I can launch it from here or I can launch it from the icon. Let's see if that works. And a huge amount of my childhood was spent uh, playing this game. I say my childhood. This is 96, 97. Um, I was actually uh, in my 20s. Uh, but I was a college student, so uh, yes. So as you can see, that's now working. So back to Steam. Uh, I can sign in with my user account. And you can see these are all the games in my library that I can install. And you can see the uh, Windows games aren't available, and that's to do with the Proton settings. So now I can click install and it's going to take 1.4 uh, gigabyte of space. Now this machine is particularly underpowered for playing this game. I tend to do most of my gaming on consoles. But this is how you would do it and, and you can see that means you can play Windows games within Linux using Proton. And you can see this is what it's going to do. It's going to install Grand Theft Auto, it's going to install the Steam Linux one time, it's going to install Proton Experimental and then um, Grand Theft Auto would um, run. You see I've got Simply Chess on the desktop. As you can see Simple Chess is now um, loaded. Now, Like I said this machine is very under spec for um, playing games. Uh, finally before I go let's have a look at this wallpaper situation. So this is GNOME so you can actually choose your wallpaper straight from the GNOME desktop and you could add in your own pictures. Go into the pictures folder, go to wallpapers and then you can pick your own image. And there we have it, the background image has changed. Right, so um, it's time to sum up. It's been an interesting video um, to, to make, an uh, interesting distribution to use. So what what, what are my views? Uh, so Nabara is Fedora with a few extensions on top. Um, it gives you the ability to play games, connect controllers and do a little bit extra on top of what Fedora does. Uh, if you're confident with Fedora, then you can get all these things installed yourself. Um, but if you uh, want to skip ahead and just uh, use your system as it is and want all the mod cons that Nabara gives you, then um, I, c I can recommend Nabara. And actually, I, I, I wonder why it's not higher in the list because it's actually pretty decent. Uh, now I had hit and miss playing old games um, from goodoldgames.com um, but I think I'd have had that problem um, on many systems. Uh, in fact when I uh, googled the issue um, people have mentioned it on Arch and various other systems as well so it's not unique to Nabara or indeed Fedora. The extras that are added on they're not many but they're useful. Uh, I would say with things like Gnome though uh, if you were using Gnome in uh, 2023 I recommend having a higher spec PC. Uh, I'm not sure four gigabytes of RAM is suitable anymore, to be honest with you. It, it slows down at times, especially if you try and do anything um, yeah, intensive. Uh, my other machine's got uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, and I'm sure it would, it, it would run a lot smoother on there. So I'm not going to hold that against Nabara. I think I'm using a slightly under spec machine for using GNOME. Uh, the only thing I would say uh, is a bit of a letdown is the Nabara App Center. Um, I think you're better off using the GNOME Store or the KDE Discover Tool if you're using one of those two desktop environments. Uh, all in all, uh, Nabara is a decent distribution. Uh, if you want to use Fedora but don't want to have to set it up yourself, then uh, Nabara is good. Um, and that's the end of the review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.